All right, guys, I'm excited for tonight because we've got none other than Will Hamilton from Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Will, I'm so happy you're with us tonight. You were the guy who inspired me to start making some videos online. Uh, well, thanks, man. Peter, thank you for having me here, dude. Uh, it's good uh, It's good to be here. Um, I'm surprised I didn't, uh, I didn't scare you off with some of our earlier uh, – uh, uh, original, original videos. Um, it's, it's, uh, the, the co-founder of, uh, of FYB and I'm Adam Siminski. Uh, my best friend from first grade is, uh, he's the C CTO, big tech guy. And he looks back at some of those original videos. He's like, man, that was, some of those were rough. Some of them were a little rough, but they were for, for their time cutting edge. And, uh, and then you had all those great videos of like Federer hitting the ball and, and the Dow and all those guys, which which people love. You know what's crazy about those videos? So we rented, that was like circa 2009, 10, 11. We rented a camera called a Red One. And it's a movie camera. It's, you know, it was really expensive to rent. The picture, obviously, quality was great. But now you can literally do the exact same thing with this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. I still have some of the old cameras we used to use. I mean, there are these massive cameras that now you just, you can use this. It's it's nuts. That is crazy. Now, do you do you? But it still looks like when you do your your filming, you still have some of the the big artillery you bring in, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we definitely we definitely if we're doing a big shoot with like, you know, Martina Navratilova or Gigi Fernandez or the Bryan Brothers, something like that, we'll bring in the big artillery. I mean, we'll we'll hire a whole film crew that you would use to shoot, you know, a music video, a, a movie, a TV show, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty um, awesome. Just, you know, one a you don't want your stuff to fail when you're shooting it, um, which includes like it breaking at the moment or it being shot, but shot incorrectly. And then you can't do it. You know, you're, you're toast at that point because shoots over and like, oh man, like the, <laughs> the focus was off or something like that, or it's just framed poorly. So you just have to have, you know, uh, somebody who's really good is going to produce a great looking video. Uh, and I, I need it. So, you know, it takes a lot to make me look good on camera. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we have people right now coming in. So what Ooh, I want to do, is I just want to do a quick sound check. I'm going to go to the link that people are in and I'm going to ask people to uh, say hello, say where you're from. Let us know if you can hear us and see us okay. So I'm yeah, just writing in right now. This thing. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, you can maybe go to that link too. I don't know if you know yeah. it, but anyway, yeah, we got people hopping on, which is, which is pretty cool. That come through. And uh, tonight is all about Will's playbook. And what I love about your playbook, Will, and, and our theme tonight is how to beat people you know you should be beating. You know, we, we all have that to where, where we lose to people that were like, how how that in the world that just how? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so you're gonna you're you claim that it's not all about technique, because you know what I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've swung at a ball and then I look at my hands and what am I doing wrong? But you claim it's, it's more up here, right? I think, I think we tend to obsess over technique to the detriment of everything else. Um, obviously improving your technique is important, but, uh, I mean, let me put it this way. I played in college, uh, Davidson college. If everybody knows Steph Curry, that's where Curry went. But I played on the team. I, I came in as a freshman. I was on the bench. That's unsurprising. You come in as a freshman. The upperclassmen are better than you. I uh, played all four years, five days a week, two hours a day. And I left, I graduated senior, also rode the bench. Um, and so just grinding and didn't really feel like I was making that much progress. And then when I figured out that, oh, you know, and I started really learning about strategy and specifically plays, that's when my game really – made a leap for a number of reasons. But if I played myself now, so I'm 36 years old now, if I played my 22 year old self when I was, you know, in my athletic prime in college, I would absolutely kill my 22 year old self right now. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's another thing I'm proud of you for is, you know, you, you played college and lots of people after college, uh, they're kind of done. I know I was done for a while, but you, yeah. you love the sport enough to where you, you seem like you've kept playing the whole time, huh? I was on the bench, man. <laughs> How do you get burned out if you're on the bench? Okay. I was like, I was waiting to get started. I was like, man, I need to get some reps. Uh huh. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, how often do you play a week? Uh, I'm probably about like 2.5. Okay. I'd say 
That's pretty good. 2.5. Now, did you start putting this playbook? How did we come up with the playbook? How long has it been in development? Uh, and how did you put it together? Was it you yourself just kind of going, oh, that works, that works? Or I know you've worked with so many great people, yeah. Martina and Rafter and the Brian Bros, Gigi. Yeah. How'd this happen? It was it was it was Bob and Mike Bryan who kind of turned me on to it because they're so we worked with them in 2011 and uh, you know I kind of came in there I was like oh, well what are we gonna talk about and um, they were like well you know let's talk why don't we talk about how we we run plays to win points because their their whole thing at least in doubles is uh, is really really structured actually let me. I almost want a piece of paper. Hold on one second. I can probably draw this. Okay, cool. That's nice. Will is going to get us a piece of paper. He's going to be drawing. So I always like we have some this, illustrations. This could go poorly. Um, I am. I am. I am. I, I like to think I have many talents, but artwork is not one of them. <laughs> but so that Bob and Mike have this thing called the secret sauce, and it's super simple. It's just get to the net is uh you know get to net and this various marker is not working this is what happens when you do things live yes work walking on the tight tight wire i know all right so this is this is functioning enough hopefully that works so their whole thing bob and mike's whole thing was like look we have one goal when we play dobs and it's get to net uh and get as close as possible and then we then all the volleys up there are super easy. So if you've been watching, for the folks who have watched uh, uh, the free series I put out, when I'm talking about the high ground, mm -hmm. where the most important thing you can have in tennis, whether it's um, uh, and to go back to your question about strokes, the number one advantage you can have in tennis is a court positioning advantage. That's the number two equally matched folks. Court position is your number one advantage. So I stole Sun Tzu's line, you know, Art of War, the high ground. And so this is my very professional drawing. But in doubles, and I got this, this, this is what Martina Navratilova, uh, Navratilova uh, taught me. And she was like, literally, you want to be hitting down and you want your opponents hitting up. Mm -hmm. Okay. In doubles. So, and that was like a, a reframe on what Bob and Mike said where, you know, their secret sauce is get to as close to the net as possible and hit as many easy volleys up there because you're literally just hitting down. And then you can get the ball at their feet. They have to hit up, and then you're in a situation where you're going to win most of those points. So anyway, that was, you know, they, they're talking about that, and everything they did was to set something up like that, and you had to run a play to orchestrate this situation where you're, you know, up at net hitting down on the ball. Um for dubs so i was like huh that's interesting that's something i don't do yeah you know <laughs> so that kind of started it all and then i just sort of started categorizing all the plays that players ran in dubs uh and then uh in singles yeah what i love about what you do is you work with, with craig osanishi and and yeah craig's man and and they're both big on numbers so I think a lot of what you're doing is just not based off of, oh, I went out and played good today. Oh, this yeah. play must work for everybody. I, is, is what you're putting together for everybody, like based on stats, like if you run these plays, this is, it's statistically proven that it, you're gonna win more. Yeah, yeah. it's all, it's all data-driven. It's all data-driven what we're doing, whether it's, uh, you know, the stats we have with Craig. So Craig and I have collaborated on a number of products, which are, awesome and his stats are amazing and what we wanted to find out so for for uh one of the people on fyb's team is a, is a guy named Faisal hassan he's the 2011 uspta coach of the year you know Faisal obviously peter he's an incredible coach one of the best coaches in the world but Faisal and i were like well let's let's see how this stuff shakes out at the recreational level it so this is happening on the pro tour but at the rec level the 30 the 305 the 40 level do these numbers hold? And we had found that they actually do. Like a lot of the stats are basically the same and the play structure is the same. And the end of the day, I mean, we see the court behind you, like the tennis court is a rectangle, right? And so it's got a certain, you know, certain dimensions, certain geometry. Um, and so that doesn't change whether you're Federer or whether you're, you know, a 3-0. And 
Um, there's all sorts of implications related to that uh, in terms of the geometry, in terms of where you should position yourself, and then in terms of how the ball comes into you. You know, this concept, Paul Wardlaw was the guy that came up with the term inside and outside ground strokes. Um, and depending on the type of ball you're receiving, it depends on where you can hit. Uh, and the best way to describe it is like if you, to, to use an analogy, is if you follow baseball, most uh, home runs for a righty are hit into left field. Because the righty batter, I probably should do it reverse. Is that how it works on video? But you can pull the pitch when it's in when it's coming into you. You can pull it easier, and so you're more likely to get a hit or hit a home run. And the pitches that are away are the harder ones to hit for for home runs or even get hits because you're kind of pushing them. Mm -hmm. So so even the type of ball you're receiving affects whether you can change whether you can and should change direction whether you should send it back cross court. Um, it's basically how much leverage do you have over the ball. So all these ingredients, I started adding them together um, to to sort of figure out what are the smart plays, what are the high percentage plays, and how can we use them in a coherent way that allows us to play better tennis and allows us to get the most out of the game that we've already got. Because a lot of people have the strokes, but they hit a, a low percentage shot or a dumb shot. Like to go back to the – the the court's a rectangle you hit the wrong shot you could put yourself out of position just based on the geometry of the court so a lot of people i call it the domino effect a lot of people will make a decision error that then three shots later lead to them missing because they're on the run they're out of position and we tend to blame the last domino we miss the shot and we're like you know what my backhand is messed up i need to fix this thing well, your backhand's fine you hit a dumb shot three balls earlier and now you're out of position on the dead run. Yeah. You're going to miss that ball. You're under stress. So you can, and this is one of the things we did with Faisal. Um, so we charted 450 recreational matches and we found that 85% of unforced errors could have been traced to a decision error. Wow. The little, yeah. Yeah. It, and it, it's a domino effect though. Cause you don't, you don't realize that two or three shots ahead, you made a mistake and that's why that what, led to that last domino. We just blame the last domino and you're like, man, I'm just, I need to work on this backhand volley, you know, or this, this backhand slice. That's not, and you're like, well, sure work on it, but that's not actually the source of the problem. Yeah. What you're saying there, I really want people to get is so powerful because I, I teach a lot on the court still. And you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, so many times I'm giving a lesson. I ask, well, when did you lose the point? And they, ne they always look to, the shot that they just hit rather than no, when you went in this position and sure it was tempting, that line looked really tempting to go to, but as soon as you hit it, you got in trouble right away. And so it's so important that this playbook from what I'm getting from you, of course, you're going to have to study it. You're going to have to get it kind of like a, a quarterback learning his plays, but sure. is this going to help players out there kind of take the thinking out of, out of tennis to where, like they're just playing smart tennis on autopilot. Is that kind of a little bit of the idea behind it? Uh, you know, eventually, yeah. Eventually, yeah. But it's not, um, you know, it's not some magic bullet, right? I mean, you, you so you look at like other, and this was part of the idea. You look at other sports like soccer, they run plays to score goals. And football teams run plays to score touchdowns. And basketball teams score or run plays to uh, score baskets. But it's not like there's just like a, a pl one play will work for everybody. Like you got to match it to your game. Like, like you take uh, you take basketball. So all teams are, you know, would love to just get as many layups as possible. All the other teams working their butt off to prevent you from getting a layup. But every team based on their roster is going to run a different play. Like some teams with like really good guards might run a pick and roll, right? Like the Warriors and Steph Curry, they, they run pick and roll all the time. Um, but another team might run like a backdoor cut, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not, I'm not a good. Those are literally the only two basketball plays I really know <laughs> for the most. Well, you, there's a the post up. You explain them beautifully. Yeah, there's a post uh, up in there. One thing that's kind of cool. We keep getting more and more people. I think we're up to 62 people. So I do just want to thank everybody for joining us. If you do have a question, there is a chat box right next to our video. Feel free to ask some questions. I'm basically ch checking it every couple of minutes so i'm asking yeah, i think i'm in here did you see my comment did you ask did you put a comment down well i think so it's a group chat did it work group chat 
I see love set tennis. Hey, Peter and Will, loving from Los An loving it from Los Angeles. I don't see your chat. What? I don't see your thing. Sorry, buddy. This is ridiculous. I said greetings, Earthlings. Oh, well, I think that went to me. Oh. Well, how do I get I, I think I'm the Earthling. Um let's see. Do you have the actual link? I'll try and uh, just like an admin or something. Yeah. Or or like a co-presenter. Which is ridiculous. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna email you the the link we're on right now, Will. Uh, next question. Well, I'm going to email you the, the link. Um, one thing that I like what you said is that this playbook, you know, according to your style, it's customized to your style. So could you kind of explain how, how is this playbook going to be built? Like if I'm a, a serve and volley, or I, I, I serve and volley, or I like to hit and crush the ball, or if I'm an all court player, a pusher, do you help pushers out there win more? Like, how does this work? Yeah, we so you cut out a little bit. So can you I, I can you ask the first part of the question again? Sure. So what I was asking, Will, is is you said that this playbook is going to be customized to each player's ability, kind of yeah. skill level, the way their style of play. So mm -hmm. how is that going to work? How are you going to help uh, a, a basher of the ball uh, and then go help someone who pushes the ball? Like how are you going to? Yeah. How is this going to work for both styles? Yeah, so you, the first thing that happens is you would take something called that we call the HDDSS assessment, which is basically just an assessment of your strengths and weaknesses and what you are able to do with the tennis ball. And it'll be both for your sword and your shield. So if you saw the free training, we talk about how your stronger shot is your sword and your weaker shot is your shield. It tends to be the forehand and the backhand, but um, it's not always the case. So I just typically refer to stronger side sword, weaker side is shield. And um, even that dynamic in terms of how it matches up geometrically with, uh, with your opponent is incredibly important in terms of the plays you're going to use. Because like a simple example is like if you have two righties, the sword and the shield, the swords are going to be cross court and the shield will be cross court. But if you have a lefty, then it changes where it, so I'm a lefty. So my sword is always cross court to a righty's shield if the righty's backhand is weaker. So that changes significantly the plays I would use versus a righty versus a righty, if that makes sense. Sure. So you need to so so and then and then in terms of this assessment, it's like, okay, well, what makes my sword my sword, right? So some people crush the ball. That's good, you know. So other people are better with direction, other people are better with controlling the height changing the height of the ball or changing the speed or, you know, the, the spin. So all those ingredients, how do you mix them together? And based on those ingredients, what plays are right for you? If that makes sense. Sure. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, is there also something inside the course or within your training? I think, I think you're kind of also going to do like live week, weekly training where people go out there and let's say they're, they're running a play that, that they feel, fits their game and then they find that that play is not working. It, it, are there plan B's? Like how do they know like how long they should go with the play before they're like, ah, oh, this isn't working today. Like, is there anything in there? Yeah, that's one of the most, so one of the, one of the most common questions I get uh, is I was doing something at the start of a match and then it stopped working. And what do I do? I don't know how to adjust. Um, and for me, like, I, I think back to, uh, I mean, years ago when, uh, you know, everybody, it's, as they get better, there's, a, there's always a period of time when you can't beat a pusher. And it's always like one of the most painful times because at least for me, I remember one match in particular, I was playing against this pusher and I won the first set. And what I was doing was working enough for me to win. I don't want to say it wasn't super close, but it was like a six, four set, won the first set. So it was effective. And, but then it stopped working. Like the guy figured out what I was trying to do. And so I had to start going closer to the lines more and more. And then you, we all know what starts to happen and you start to spray, you start to miss. And then I lost the second set. And then now you're getting into the third and it's tight and it's, you know, you're, you're on serve and you start to feel the scoreboards pressure. And in the absence of, having a play or another strategy you can go to and when you're relying completely on your shots to get the job done and when you have to go for more and more 
but you're missing and you realize, well, man, if I miss a couple more shots, I'm going to lose this match. Then what often happens, what happened to me is I completely backed off and I started pushing. Mm-hmm. But then you're trying to beat a pusher at his own game, and that you know that never works. <laughs> yeah, then, so, you're, then you're in pusher hell. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It never. It never works. Mm-hmm. The pusher uses a play I refer to as trench warfare, because um, it's like you're in your trench. Well, he's in his trench, which is way behind the baseline, and then he's hitting these loopy lame balls, and most people have a tendency of backing up into their trench. And then he's got you because you don't want to, you know, people say, well, hey, just move, just go to net against the pusher, just step in and rip the ball. It's like, well, great. If you can't do that, if you don't have that ability, then what do you do? Like, sure, if you're a four or five, you can step in and put the ball away, come to net, and put the ball away. But if you're a three, five, it's harder to, it's harder to pull that off. So what do you do in that situation? There's, uh, there's, so again, court positioning most important advantage you could have over somebody you can there's fourth uh, well technically there's three things you can do you can stretch them wide and you can obviously do it on either end of the court you can push them back or you can pull them in right so there's three ways you can affect someone's core positioning and the pusher likes it when you know he pushes you back he's happy to hang back so if you actually it's counterintuitive in this case but if you pull him in then you put him in an awkward situation and that's how I would recommend most people go about attacking a pusher is actually to pull them in and get them out of their trench. That that's a that's a great point. I, I love that because yeah, now you're forcing the pusher, especially the more difficult short ball you give them. Now you're forcing them to to come up and create, which which they don't like. They typically don't like to be the first one to create. They like to be the one to keep balls in. And then some pushers are really good when they get their back against the wall. They can come up with miraculous lob or even some good passing shots there's different levels of pusher out there so very good stuff um we do have a question i want to see can you do a little more assessment for backhand instead of forehand typically my forehand gets 99 percent of the love i my forehand is seven and my villains is a six but my forehand is a five i think he's talking about matchups i think i think the question so i think the question might be like so let's say my, I, I think, and what's the person's name out of curiosity? Brian. This is Brian yep. Smith, who's going to come out and do some tennis with me. Hi, Brian. Oh, nice. I think the question is, and if I'm wrong, please tell me, but it would be like, let's say you got two righties. And so it's both, uh, both of them, their forehands are their swords. And so my sword's at a seven and villain's sword is at a six. Does it make sense for me to hit my favorite shot, my forehand cross court in that exchange? Or let's say my backhand's a five but villain's backhand is a two. So it'd be shield, shield, a five versus a two. Would it make sense to switch to that exchange instead? Because I think the genesis of the question, because I've received a similar question like that before. Oh, that's a good question. That's actually good. The way you broke that down was better. <laughs> good. So what is the answer? How do you do it? Well, so the answer the answer is as a, as a setup, yeah, you want to go shield, shield, but then if you can actually shift over and end up with a sword versus a shield, so it'd be an inside out forehand, which is now a seven versus a two versus a five versus a two. Um, and if you, there's a second, if, if people haven't seen, I, I have a training video on my channel, which is just uh, fuzzy yellow balls, like dot dot com, Facebook slash fuzzy yellow balls dot, like dot com. And the second video talks about a play called home base where I show you how to shift over to that exchange. So basically you're trying to establish a positioning advantage, but then you're also trying to shift it where it's your stronger shot, your sword versus their shield. So that would be, that would be the the setup I would go for, but it takes a little maneuvering to get to that situation. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And that seems like that's what the pros are trying to do all day long, right? Yep. That, it's a yeah. base play. Yeah, for sure. And Brian did say, yes, that question was from me. And so I think you nailed it. Uh, very cool. We got 70 people on. I see that we got three likes. I always like, I always get emotional high when I get a thumbs up. So if you would give me and Will a thumbs up, that just makes us feel better and deliver even more, more better content. Is that, is that right? Perfect. Uh, perfect. Your English <laughs> teacher would love you. Very proud. Mo better content. Okay. Mo better. So. <laughs> Here's a question I personally have. It, it you got I got this playbook. I think I could freak someone out. Can I bring that 
a playbook on the court with me? That would be amazing if he just rolled up with this thing. Just, yeah. Uh, you know, just like, hey, man, do you mind if I look at this? Actually, the better thing to do would be uh, one of the bonuses if you grab the program is the villains playbook. So there's seven types of villains. If you just walked up to this guy, if you don't know who he is, be like, hey, man, can you just look at this real quick and tell me which one you are? Right. Because in here, there's there's five plays that will tell me exactly how to beat you. So the way we break it down, there's five phases of the game, serving, returning, rallying, heroes approaching, and villains approaching. So if there's seven villains, five phases of the game, five plays for each, you know, a, a play for a phase. So seven times five is 35 plays. I don't know if I explained that, if that was a word yeah. salad or not. But um, the bonus, the, 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 one of the super bonuses is we just give you this thing called the Villains Playbook, which just tells you how to beat anybody. Nice. Like instantly, yeah. Because a lot of people are like, a lot of people are like, okay, the pusher is like my Death Star, right? And at the beginning of Star Wars, the Death Star is this robo planet blowing everything up and nobody knows how to beat it. But then R2-D2 comes along with the, you know, the blueprint. And you're like, oh, you just need to shoot it down this vent, you know, shoot a torpedo down the vent, and the whole thing will blow up. And so Luke Skywalker blows the whole thing up with one, with one. I'm taking all the drama out of the movie. If you haven't seen Star Wars, I've just blown it for you. So sorry, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, the Jedi's win. Uh, but you know, it's it just sort of gives you the blueprint for defeating what might seem like a big scary opponent. Mm -hmm. And everybody sent everybody has, you know, we found eight universal weaknesses pretty much that that you can tap into. And some people are more susceptible to one weakness versus another. So it's really about figuring out what that weakness is and then running a play that sets it up, you know, so you can attack it. That, 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 uh, that's pretty cool. Now, another thought that I had is, as I'm hearing you talk about the villain, uh, how does the course help, like, like when do we start trying to figure out what style player they are? Does this start in the warm up? Like, is there little things that we're we're looking for as we're playing? How do we figure this out? Yeah. So, um, there's a million different things you can look for. So, typically, uh, what I would advise is that your very first decision, the most important decision, is sword shield. Which side is it on the left of me? Is it on the right of me? Where is the sword and the shield? And that's your only read. So no more granular than that, because when you go through the program, you're going to figure your, your plays are going to be directed at one side or another, right? And you can switch them based on which side the sword and the shield is. And then from there, then you can start to get more granular uh, in terms of what, how specifically you're going to attack a, a weakness. Let's say somebody struggles with a high ball, well, then you would use a play that gets the ball high in their strike zone. I realize I didn't answer a question you asked earlier about how do I adjust to, uh, we kind of got off, off mm -hmm. track. How do you adjust when something you're doing stops working? So when you get more sophisticated, you start layering on play. So you have like a base play. And if you run it enough, you're going to know, like here's why you don't want to go wing it, because you don't get any information from winging a match. But when you run a, when you run the same play over and over and over, you start to see what people do to adjust. Mm. And the adjustment is typically going to be the same adjustment. So you can start anticipating it. So when you know what, so if you have your base play and then you know what the adjustment's going to be, you have a play that's already there to deal with their adjustment. So you just start layering it like that. And I'll give you a, a very specific example. I'm, like I said, I'm lefty. So I know at the beginning of a match, I have a lefty kick serve. It, it's pretty decent. Um, so I know people are going to be screwed up by my, serve, my, my spin at the beginning of the match. So what I will do in the deuce court is I will actually kick out wide at a righty sword. So I'm going at their forehand on purpose. And I know that they're going to miss a lot of those returns in the first couple of games. Or they're just going to leave it short. So I'm going to keep going there and I'm going to keep doing it until they start to catch on. And I know eventually that they're, once they start catching on, I already know what I'm going to do as soon as that happens. Cause now I've sort of seeded, I guess you could say that I serve out wide a lot. And now I've set up my T serve, the T slice, or I can go out wide, but instead of kicking it, I can slice it. 
So now that guy's leaning out wide and the ball slides into him. So I jam him. Right. So I know what these adjustments are because I know what these adjustments are already going to be. I know what play to go to. So I always stay a step ahead, if that makes sense. It, it totally makes sense. I mean, what, what you remind me of is a great pitcher, right? Is, is, you know, yep. you know that when you go out, these players are going to work and then, you know, at a certain time they're going to catch on and, and you, you got to sense and feel that. And then it's time to change it up again. And when you're able to do it this way, rather than panicking, you, you have all these little subtle change, changes. And I think that's when when people really kind of lose matches and they never figure out why they lost is because their opponent is always one step ahead. They're making these little subtle changes to make you think you're playing really bad, but they're just moving it around a little bit and you don't even realize yep. that it's happening. So that's that's pretty cool. I like yeah, to Go back to Craig O'Shaughnessy. He, he says, how much history do you have? Like as the match goes on, there's more history. And that's important. Most people don't think about it and – you know, they're trying to figure it out on the fly. It's like, well, you know, be one step ahead. And that's one of the reasons a playbook is so important is it simply, it gives you the plan ahead of time mm -hmm. when you start building that out and you're a little bit more intentional about what you're going to do during a match. Yeah. We have a couple questions. Uh, one is technical. So if you will indulge, Joe's a great guy too. Play as hard as possible. All right, next question. <laughs> he said, I tend to brush up too much on my forehand. Is there a drill to facilitate extending my swing path? I can shadow swing perfectly, but that seems to disappear when I play a match. You have like a quick, just technical tip, and mm. then we'll get right into um, uh, strategy again. Hmm, swing through the ball. I'm trying to think uh... – but it evaporates during a match. So is this is this like a, a in match tweak or is this a uh, uh, like something you can practice? Well, I think he's. Just, I just think we have a tip to help him um, extend his swing path in general. And I, I have one that would probably work in a match or in practice. Uh, if you'd like me to take that, go for it, man. Okay, so <laughs> we watch TV all the time, and we're always looking at the, uh, you know, brushing. You know, it looks like they're barely with the ball. But if you watch in slow motion, actually with it a lot longer than you think. And I actually like a drill. And I saw Robert Lansdorf actually teaching Pete Sampras the same thing called the triangle finish, where you hit and you extend out and you make a triangle with, with your hands. And at least that will get you the feeling of staying with the ball. So – that's what yeah, I one yeah. like hit through three balls. I mean, that one's pretty common. You know, imagine you're hitting through. Yeah. Three balls. That's that's not particularly revolutionary or insightful. Oh, it's revolutionary. No one's ever heard that before. Really. <laughs> heard it here first, folks. <laughs> okay. So um, we have a couple more things. How do how do you ID the, the villain's play style? We kind of did that. Um Oh my gosh, Essential Tennis is on. Are you kidding me? Boo. Are you kidding Boo. me? Unbelievable. Boo, Ian. Oh, we, 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 love, we love Ian. He's okay. I, th I don't think we have anything really that's much different. I have a couple questions as we're going through. Now, we're, we're, we're changing the plays just at the right time. We're, we're getting to the to the the ultimate high point of the set where the pressure comes back. Is there plays in the playbook that really work well when you're ready to freak out, when it's like the match is on the line? Do I have my plays that's going to make me feel so good and comfortable out there? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, this is not this is not uh, the most revolutionary um, uh, answer, but it's it's one that that uh, I learned that Pat Rafter told me. So when I was working with Pat in 2013, I said, what do you do when you're under pressure? And it was a, it was a serve related question. And he said, look, you just got to go to your absolute best serve. You know, even if they know their, even if your opponent knows it's coming, go to your absolute best shot and force them to beat you, particularly when you're serving, because you already have the advantage. So on first serve, at least. So I wouldn't, you know, there's always this question of like, well, man, uh, do I need to like, do I need variety? Do I need to like keep this person off balance or, or, or trick them with what I'm about to do? And the answer is absolutely not. You can, it doesn't matter if somebody knows what you're going to do, can they stop it? And the most obvious example of that is Rafael Nadal. Like everybody knows exactly what Rafael Nadal is going to do. 
He's going to serve at your backhand 80% of the time, and he's going to hit his forehand at your backhand if you're ready. 100% of the time, 80% of the time, 100% of the time. That's all he does. And and he's won 10, 10 French Opens and uh, what, six more majors? Is he at 16? I think he's at 16. Is that right? I think he is at 16, yeah. And nobody, yeah, nobody can stop it. And that play, the cross court, the lefty cross court. So when you have the, the cross court uh, sword to shield, um, I call the battering ram. Because you're literally just just keep hammering away. Yeah. You don't need any subtlety. Yeah. There's no subtlety to that play, and you don't need any. You know? Very cool. So that would be that would be my advice is just have, you know, the, the plays that you're best at, use those under pressure. Mm-hmm. Go, uh, exactly. The other, the other, your villain's feeling the pressure, too. You know? Force them to come up with a great shot. That's true. That's really good. So actually, I'd like to kind of go a little more into detail about the course specifics now. Um, tell us the big difference between the hero's playbook and the villain's playbook. And and uh, maybe you could walk us through everything that's inside the course. And I know that also you have a ton of bonuses. I'm not sure if everybody really understands how many bonuses you've thrown into this. Thing. <laughs> I, want, I want people to get that feel right now sure sure so very first it's a four week online training program so like you know i show this and people are like wait are you going to send me something in the mail and the answer is maybe um so it's a four week online training program and what we do so there's five phases of the game uh serving returning rallying heroes approaching villains approaching and we after you take that initial assessment at the beginning of the program we then work with you to find the 17 uh, perfect plays for you, custom to your game, custom to your ability, whether you're 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, or beyond, and your style of play, counter punch or aggressive baseliner, serve and volleyer. Everything's about customizing this so that the playbook you end up with is completely different from everybody else. It's what will allow you and your current ability to get the most out of your game. And then, so all of that's online. So it's an online training program. And then afterwards, if you want, I will print this all up. I'll put your name here instead of mine. This is my playbook, obviously. And I'll ship it to you, um, ship it to you in the mail. So you have a physical copy of it, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but you certainly don't need to do that if you don't want to. Every play you can download as a PDF, print it out, build your own uh, if you want to. But I thought it'd be cool to, to send something in the mail. Uh, and then after that, based on the 17 plays that uh, we've customized to you, we also give you a, uh, a practice plan. So that's actually super bonus number two. I'll come back to number one in a second. But super bonus number two is a custom practice plan. This is a thing we've done with a small group of our students um, over the internet where we basically just create, we give them video trainings on specific exercises that are uh, uh, specific to them and their game. So we figured, well, we have these 17 plays that are be custom to everybody. We can do the exact same thing for um, everybody that goes through the program so that the practice plan they get uh, is specific to them. The drills and exercises they have will enhance their ability to execute a play with the game they've already got, but then also set them up to improve. Because uh, one of the things I found, like in college, I was you know kind of mindlessly practicing. So you're sort of just spinning your wheels, right? You're slamming on the accelerator, but you're stuck in mud, so you're just spinning your wheels, not getting anywhere. So this practice plan will get somebody unstuck because they're going to work on things that are actually going to not only allow them to get the most out of the game they have, but then it'll allow them to improve, right? When you work on executing a play, then you work on hitting the shots that you actually need in a match versus, you know, how many times have you hit on a ball machine and you're like, man, I was hitting great in, on the ball machine and then I was terrible in a match. I mean, you never, you know, you're not going to get a ball machine ball in a match. So that uh, that thing's cool. That thing when we did it separate, uh, when we did it for some of our clients was uh, 500 bucks, but we'll just toss that in as a bonus. So that's cool. The other, the first super bonus I already talked about was the villains playbook, um, which this is co-founder Adam Sminsky made this graphic, coolest graphic I think in the whole program. But uh, that's 35 plays that'll show you how to beat the seven types of villains. So five plays per villain. And it's just like, this is exactly what you do to beat a pusher or a counter puncher or a serving volleyer. Uh, and that thing's sold separately, would be 400 bucks too. So it's pretty cool. Those Between those two, that's 
uh, what's that math? Nine, I'm dyslexic, so I never do math on camera, but that's like 900 bucks of bonuses. And then I'll fire through the other ones real quick. There's um, there's a program we have called the 100 Mile an Hour Club, which okay. is- I'm just gonna uh, stop you one, one second too. I did I did put the link right in the comments there. So people can uh, can check out the link. Go ahead, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Yeah, 100, 100 MPH Club is, is literally how do you take your serve and get you towards serving 100, mile an hour, 100 miles an hour. It's with, um, you know, Mark, you obviously know Dr. Mark Kovacs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, number one science tennis scientist in the world, but um, he's the world's leading expert on the serve. So top level, it's how do you get all the energy out of your body and transfer it through your body, concentrate it in the tennis ball, do it in a way where you don't hurt yourself. Because um, a lot of people, their motion causes them to basically release energy. This I learned this all from Mark. You like you, you release it in your shoulder if your technique is incorrect, right? So if you have shoulder problems or you know, maybe a hip problem or elbow problem. It could be, again, I'm not a doctor, make that very clear, but it could be because of incorrect technique leading to yourself putting stress on a part of your body that uh, that you shouldn't be. So I actually had a shoulder problem. I was open, I was over rotating is the term um, for the mistake I was making and it was putting stress and strain on my shoulder. And then when I, uh, when I worked with Mark on this, it, it went away immediately. So that was pretty cool. Um, that's a two hundred dollar. That one hundred ninety nine bucks is what we sold that for. Um, that's free as well. Um, so what is that like eleven hundred bucks now? Then there's tennis over fifty is a cool. And we only released this once. That's also with Dr. Kovacs. Uh, but this thing was four hundred ninety nine bucks when we sold it. But this is literally like for the over fifty crowd because when you turn forty five, every year if you don't do anything, you lose one percent of your muscle mass year over year. And the issue for most tennis players is they lose stabilizing muscles. Like a lot of people will go to the gym and do like push-ups and stuff or bench press. And those are the bigger muscles. But if you go back to how do you get energy out of your body, through your body into the tennis ball, it's the stabilizing muscles that that facilitate that transfer. So we thought that'd be a good compliment. Um, you know, improve your serve, your, your technique's gonna be down, but then how do you actually strengthen the connecting parts of your body? so that you can transfer the energy smoothly uh, through your body into the ball. So tennis over 50 is a great program. Um, that's a $500 uh, program we sold. So that is like 1600 now. Am I doing this right? <laughs> I, 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 well, I'm dyslexic too, Will. So don't ask me. Are you really? Oh, yeah. oh, novel. We it, talked about this one insane. time uh, over a beer, but I do want to bonus package is $10. Yeah, I, I do want to, uh, jump on what you just said. Cause now I'm 45. Uh, so there you go, guys, I'm 45 years old and I have a personal trainer now for the first time ever that I'm actually paying a personal trainer to work me out. And, and we are working on stabilization. That's what he has been working on all the time. These are lots of exercises that I've never really done before or as much like I've done them like a little bit but you know I've been the kind of, I like to get in the weight room do do the macho stuff and then I realize that all this other stuff I absolutely suck at and as I was watching your video will a lot of the moves I saw Mark Kovacs doing um, were very similar to what I'm now doing are you doing like the side plank where you have the weight and doing have you done that one I have been doing a lot of plank work. I don't know if I'm doing the exact one with the exact technique, but it's a lot of a lot of core work, a lot of a balance work, uh, building up the strength in the hips, flexibility, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff I saw in the video look look very familiar to what I'm starting to do now. So it's yeah, really one of, one, of, one of my favorites is the side plank, but then you hold like a 3 or 5 pounds weight and you kind of do shadow swings. So you're forced to stabilize your entire body core but then through the shoulder as you swing that one is awesome yeah um that one really will allow you to get like hit a lot harder when you do it for a couple weeks and with a lot more spin yeah well all well, sorts of stuff like that in tennis over 50 that one's cool yeah well the, uh, my trainer did point out hey if you, if you if you keep doing what you're doing by the time you're 60 you're going to be all hunched over you're going to be you know a mess so it's 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 very important to do this this is a lifetime sport but we we have to take care of ourselves off the court. And I think as tennis players, since we love to be ballers out there, we, we don't take care of our body enough. So, um, and I'm, I'm 36 and I, I, you can feel it. You can feel it. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty diligent about, uh, actually didn't go to the gym today. I might go after this if it's still open in my building. Gotta, 
you know, do the stretching and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Uh, did we go through all the bonuses? Are there a couple There's more? There's one more. It's called the Parents and Coaches Playbook, uh, $99 value. But it's just basically if you're going to use – like a lot of people want to get the playbook, but they want to uh, – uh, they're getting it for their kid or they're getting it because they coach – a high school team or, uh, you know, some players. So this offers a little bit of guidance on how you can work with an, a, another player to do this. And it also is just a more general, um, particularly for parents, how do you avoid all sort of the minefields of trying to encourage your kid to become a good tennis player, but not do it in a way that blows up your relationship. I mean, Peter, I'm sure you've seen like bad relationships between parents and their kids over this sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's sort of navigating some of that. I used to work at a high performance facility and some of the, some of the, some of it was awkward. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's good to have things like that. And, and then even some parents that are just kind of getting into it and they want to do the right thing and they want to know, okay, you know, how hands on or hands off. I mean, when you get into tennis and if you're going to get into it seriously, it is, it is a full, family commitment yeah. in every regard. So uh, that's an important thing that you're doing there. And if you do it right, like I, so my dad and I play doubles once a week when we're both in town. So, and it's like a cool thing that we do every week and we've been doing it. And my dad got me into tennis. I had a tennis ball on my mobile when I was five, you know, five years old or, or not. I wasn't in a mobile when I was five. I started playing when I was five, but I had a, uh, you know, a tennis ball in the mix basically from day one. And it's a, cool father son thing that we do. Um, so that's, that's a, for all the parents out there, that's a, if you're a player, but you have a, a, a son or daughter, that's a neat thing to have. Um, and I hope to, you know, one of these days when I have kids hope to hope to do the same thing, assuming they want to be tennis players. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, again, guys, if, if you're on, uh, you can, you can ask some questions. I also did put, the link in the comment section. It's right below, uh, right next to the video, uh, and so you can you can get that. Even if I follow the hundred miles now. How will I? How am I getting there since there are no radar guns at my club? Okay. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, when you join, we give uh, we give you a serve speed app for your phone, so it turns your phone into a radar gun. It's a super cool app. There you go. It's a bad yeah. phone. That's what I like. You, you got questions. He's got answers. Yep. Uh, technology, man. <laughs> Very cool. Do you want me to go through my bonuses? Because since you guys are on this call and since I'm supporting Will's launch here, I got, I want to give away some pretty awesome. Cooking you up. Yeah. So you ready for me to do that? Or do you have any more that you'd like to go I think we got through, man? I mean, add it all up, including the price of the program on our end, we're providing, uh, was it? $2,091, uh, worth of stuff. I mean, it's, we tried to make this like just an overwhelmingly cool thing. Um, so that, you know, people were just getting way more than they paid for. Yeah. And what I'd like people to really understand is you're getting the playbooks that he's showing you, you're getting videos to follow along with that and you're getting guidance to where they're going to be doing live, uh, group calls and even there's a personal one-on-one -on -one call right yeah i actually i actually did i forgot to include i forgot to mention that yeah at the end once you've built your playbook we get on the phone and do a review at the end to make sure that one-on-one -on -one we've any questions you might have are specifically addressed with you um and then after that after we're we're totally dialed in then i would put this together and send it to you in the mail very cool if you want all right, so now I'm going to do something that always scares me, Will, is I'm going to share the screen. And uh, I always think like all the lights in the house are going to turn out or something like this when I, when I do this. But it seems to always <laughs> so. So here we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to share, my, share my screen. And I believe it is starting to share. We're going to share land. And we're going to go over to my bonuses. Now, the first one I want to talk about is tennis con. I think it's the coolest thing I've ever done. Well, maybe working with the legends, which you're also going to get interviewing Rod Laver and John Newcomb, Fred Stye, Roy Emerson. That's also, you're going to get that tonight too. But uh, you can see tennis con. What we did is we interviewed the best coaches in the world and, and uh, they, we had a different theme on every day. So 
So Monday, we also were on the court. So you can see there's uh, Roy Emerson teaching a lesson right there, which is pretty cool. And there's me and Matt, my buddy Matt, Matty B. I go through the slice serve, a, a 47 minute video. Um, Tennis Con sells for 197. Jeff Salzenstein, um, there he is live. He did an amazing job. That's 49 minutes. We, we counted up, it's like over 16 hours worth of content just in Tennis Con. Uh, oh, this is Rodney Harmon who was my coach growing up, he got to the quarterfinals of the US Open one year. Uh, and I think he lost to Connors there. And he's the coach at Georgia Tech. Great coach. He's been, he's done like on court with USPTA on the tennis channel. Phenomenal coach. Lisa Dotson with the serve master. And a lot of people have told me this presentation they loved. And this is 24 minutes. I mean, you can see that Everyone's a lot of, and this is classic. This is Newcomb talking about, uh, he's going over a story where he is, he gets into a fight, almost goes to blows with Don McEnroe and, and Newcomb is so damn entertaining. So the, that's the first day, which is pretty freaking cool. Okay. Um, Tuesday, we're going to go to Tuesday now. And this was, I think about the ground stroke. So uh, again, there's the live lesson of the day that we have recorded. We always have legends out there. Uh, a lot of times Roy Emerson was out there and pretty much every day, Brian Godfried. This is Newcomb's uh, rally chant, which is hysterical. Newcomb basically goes nuts in this video, getting this team pumped up to play, which is fun to watch. Then we have Alex and Simon from Top oh, Tennis Training. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're awesome. And they, they're uh, going over crushing approach shots. Uh, they do a great job. Kevin Garlington, 25 minute lesson on the backhand. You got uh, Kevin O'Neill, who coaches uh, ATP players. He's working with Katie o O'Malley, who's a phenomenal player out of Cincinnati. She's she's like 15 years old now, and she's playing like Junior Wimbledon and getting the finals and things like that. I mean, we got really awesome. And there's the best coach of the whole freaking thing on the top. Who is that guy? Who is that guy? No, seriously, who is he? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> some rando. He's some rando. We have Mar Maribon, who's getting ready to do the tennis summit. So Maribon, Maribon lives in D.C. We hit regularly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's a good player. He's a really cool guy. That's a 35-minute lesson. Good forehand. He, he goes righty forehand cross court at my lefty backhand. It's not fun. It's don't not like, fun? Do not enjoy it. And then Ken DeHart. You know Ken DeHart, right, yeah, Will? Of course. Of course. Ken's the man. So that's... This is just one bonus, guys. I, I gave it as I'm doing this, Mike. I gave away too many bonuses. You so that's pull it back, dude. You guys should sign up. Um, let's see, Br Brent Abel. We we're uh, right. going yeah. through his plays. This is kind of cool. Doubles plays. Uh, if you've ever watched, what's the right shot? That's kind of what we did. Uh, where Brent goes through, he stops. He he plays actual points. He's he's won seven national amateur championships. And we basically go through his plane on the court and he'll stop the video and go, okay, what's it's the next a, play, guys? That's a great series. I, I've hit with him on a grass court at Mission Hills in, uh, in uh, uh, California. Uh, for, only time I ever hit on grass court. And I was like, this is the weirdest surface of all time. But Brent is a heck of a player. Oh, yeah. He's a great I'm not, I'm not I mean, I'm <laughs> not surprised he wins everything. Yeah. Yeah, he's really. I got to play doubles with him. We did a course out there. Oh, did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here we go, Jan Azul, your buddy. Yeah, my buddy. Yeah, another DC guy. Thirty-five minutes on footwork, which was, yep. was phenomenal. Okay, yep. I mean, these are great coaches. Clay Boward with Top Speed Tennis. This was awesome. This was a great one. Nice. And it basically talked about how to build your automated uh, war chest. And and he likes to talk a lot about how you start to um, basically put ideas together in your body and on the court, like like how is the best way to learn. And um, he's just incredibly interesting, I think. Clay's really good. Scott Baxter, play your court, the art of poaching. That was a fun one. Nice, Scott's my boy. Me and Matt talked about six phases of anticipation, which goes nice with uh, Will's playbook idea. And this is your buddy, Faisal. Yeah, FYB team member. Yeah, and he did anticipation in doubles. So this was a hell of a day. 
Uh, there's a video with me and Mark Woodford, uh, which was great. And there's a fun video with Luke Jensen. He's hysterical on that video. So yeah. it's uh, educational and entertaining, which yeah. is what I, I know. I know his brother Murphy. Murphy's yeah. a character. Yeah. Murphy's usually there at the ranch, but he wasn't this year. There's uh, Newcomb again. Mike Sell. Do you know who Mike Sell is? I know the name. Mike Sell played number one for University of Georgia, Coach John Isner, Donald oh, Young. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. That's I know. He, he's now at LSU, one of the best minds I've ever like. He just he'll just crush you. He he's just so good at breaking your game down. So that that's a lot of it's playbook of the pros, uh, according to what he was, you know, from the people that he has coached out there. Um, Paul Anacone. Paul's a good guy. Love Paul. He was great. He basically talked about uh, the goat, the greatest of all time. So this goes very well with with what Will does. Singles IQ, Corey Capistain, one of the best coaches I've met. Fifty three minutes, guys. This is one bonus. <laughs> Gold dropper from the Tennis Channel. This was another forty eight oh, minutes. Oh no, dude, you got to delete that. How to beat lefties? I can't have my secrets exposed. <laughs> Ian Westerman from Essential. Oh. <laughs> dude. Roy, Roy Emerson, you better He's not. my boy for everybody who's wondering why I'm booing him. Yeah, no, you guys go way back. You guys got a history. There I am looking like I'm about to, like, I'm drunk or something, I guess. I don't know. But we're talking to Nick Balateri, who was phenomenal. Yeah. And then we, we see the top five points of the day at the ranch, which is pretty cool. Because we filmed this at um, in New Brunsville, Texas, at the Tennis Fantasy Ranch, where mm -hmm. you had, like, Rod Laver walking around and things like that. Uh, let's see. Last day we had Mark Kovacs with strength and mobility. Nice. Uh, we had better with age. This guy is awesome. George Watts. He does great stuff. I don't know him personally, but what does he uh, mean? He's good. He's, he's in his seventies and the guy moves so good. He, this week is a grind for everybody. Like when I did the week and played at the ranch, I was dead and this dude goes year after year and plays all day long and he feels fine it's hmm. so uh mark levinson he's a, a doctor and he talks about uh, uh he's pretty pretty interesting he has ms and and he basically has beat it through through fitness and and hmm. mindset and uh it's very inspirational uh, interview skip johnson who's one of my favorite guys he's a master uspta pro we have a half hour interview and Matt Bradshaw goes through flexibility. And that is it. That's that's tennis con. And so you can get that 100 percent free when you sign up. Uh, we got the link in the chat. I haven't checked the chat in a while, guys. Can I get that? <laughs> What's my, that? Where's my access? Can I get that? <laughs> Isn't it pretty good? Not bad. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be part of it this year, though, right? Well, I, I am, I am, yeah. Does that get me access? Of, of course you can have that. Right. Cool, cool. Just want to make sure. Want to make sure. Um, okay. I, I have, um, I'm not going to go, should I go through all six? I, I guess I could. Another one was uh, anticipation. Well, I think you have to help me price these things. I think I'm way underpriced for what I said. 10 I billion. Uh, this is, uh, what, what I like about this, why I added this bonus for you guys. One Bitcoin. It's one Bitcoin. This one is Bitcoin. You, buy, you can get this for one oh, Bitcoin. Wow. It's only one Bitcoin. <laughs> Cryptocurrency. Yeah. Okay. Um, this was pretty cool in that Will has the playbook, and this is about anticipating what's about to happen. So this is going to help you like use your plays. And also, I go through a lot of like uh, tell signs of what people are about to do based on body position, things like that. So we got sneak attack, weak grips. Handling the midcourt backhand, reading the midcourt forehand volley, reading the open stance backhand, reading the backhand slice options. This again is just one section of the course. Uh, how to know when you're about to get lobbed, how to know when you're about to get rocked and what to do about it, <laughs> reading top spin down the line. Um, and that's just one part. Then right in here, I play a match. And basically what we do is we go through these things that are happening, these, these, these plays that are happening and the tendencies that are developing over the match. And I tell you about, you know, what to learn from them. So that's pretty cool. We go through Pete's tendencies. If you want to know what my tendency is, you can, you can go through there. So you can come 
take a lesson from me and kick my ass. Uh, I'm reading, double faulting. That's my read, they're double faulting. Reading yeah. spins, red light, green light drill. We have other drills in there. This again was 97 bucks. Probably should have been more. Um, and you get that. I, I, let me just go back to see if you guys are having questions. How much is Will through all our talking? How much is the dar the darn course? Uh, it is. Uh, I was trying to get a cal a Bitcoin calculator. It's um it's three hundred ninety seven dollars. Okay, so it's three ninety seven. Uh, you, I'm sharing my screen right now, guys, so you can see. I just I just put the link in right next to the to the chat. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Let's see. Is, is there any it's more? It's currently zero point zero five one bitcoins. <laughs> it's all about the Bitcoin. All right, so that was anticipation. I'm just going to show you one more and then tell you the next two. You're going to get next level doubles, which has 109 videos. There's 109 videos in next level doubles. And so if you're stuck at a 3.5, you should move up to a 4.0 after you put those plays into existence. Where's the power serve course? There's power generators. But you have the 100 miles an hour club, and people can also get the my power serve course. There it is. This course, people said they really, really liked. And again, so we got lefty and righty videos, and, oh, and we nice. break down the body. We're building the kinetic chain. And so if you're a lefty or righty, you basically come and you can see yourself because I've been told that I drive some people crazy when they're watching my technique if they're a, a righty. So uh, there you go. I and then the same, you, I get the same thing, man, as a lefty. People are like, uh, can you do this as a righty? Yeah. I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, so we do reverse camera angles. And so we, we talked about finding your ultimate power source, uh, ground power, the knee test power. Uh, so you're basically going from the ground and you're working your way up. Uh, we also have a practice schedule in here. Uh, we have a serve cheat sheet. We have workouts in there. Again, this is a $97 course, all free. Uh, we have, I'm giving away the Fab Five. I'm giving away five courses at $685 worth of courses, plus Will's, I think close to, it's over 2,000 what Will's giving away. So you're, you're getting three, about $3,000 since Will and I are dyslexic worth of courses for 397 bucks when you <laughs> sign up. And Will, is this is this guaranteed? Are you playing a guarantee on this thing? Yeah, man. It's uh, 365 days, uh, no questions, money back guarantee. I mean, you know, the bottom line is like, go out, test it out for the next year, and we want people to feel like they're not risking anything. You know, uh, that's that's and and if I'm not doing my job as a coach, then you know, get all your money back. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to get paid. So. That's, you know, we try and, we try and shift the risk it, it, just in the sense like it, there's no risk in terms of um, uh, like financial risk, I guess you could say. Like the, the, the biggest risk, one of the reasons we try and we, we offer the guarantee is because like when I was in college, I played for four years and I spent all that time and I didn't feel like I was getting, I didn't really feel like I got much better. And so I think like, you know, the thing you can't get back is time. Like that's so, so I think for a lot of people, there's this risk of just like, doing, you know, not, not trying something new, sticking with their old habits. And then a year from now they're stuck where they were right now. So we want to take away all the financial risks so that people don't feel like they are risking something, trying something new, particularly if, if they haven't been getting any better. Cause you know, that, that, that's, that's to me now it's like, you know, a year from now, two years from now, four years from now, if, you're kind of stuck in the mud. That's that's a bad that's a bad situation to be in. I, I think that's a great point. I, I teach this one lady uh, private lessons, and and she's uh, I don't want to say what her age. She's in her mid fifties. She doesn't know who I. I'm not mentioning her name, so there you go. So I'm not giving her away or anything. But um, one of the things that she always mentions, you know, she's so into tennis, and she's like, I got to get good. I only have so many years to be good. So you know, I mean. It is kind of true. At some point, there are things you won't be able to do that you can do now. So you have to take advantage of the time you have. Uh, to, you know, I've been through a lot of uh, terrible things personally lately, losing my sister. And uh, you know, one thing that's really taught me is, you know, if you can get up every day and you can walk and talk, and if everybody on here can go play tennis, 
you know that that we're lucky so you should try and make the most out of your luck every day and if you're in te- if you're in the tennis and you're in the education you know why not why not give it a try you have you have nothing to lose and everything to gain um i i really admire the way all of us tennis coaches put put our guarantee on it and, you know how many things can you go out there and get as much content before you even buy something for free and then once you buy it we say if you don't like it we don't want your money so I mean, there's not a lot of things like that in life. I think particularly the that's the cool thing about the online space is that some that's something we sort of do that's different than I think a lot of other folks in the tennis industry. It's just a cool thing we're able to do. Yeah, go take a crappy lesson and ask for your money back after <laughs> it. How it goes. I got worse. Can you pay me, please? <laughs> Yeah, so I got the singles playbook link there again. Uh, if you, if if it go, you know, for whatever reason, if you get confused, you can always email me if you're on my email list, which you should be. That's how you're here. You can always email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail if you have more questions, or if you're like, where's the link again? Um, but there you go. A- anything else we should uh, say, Will? Man, I don't know. Um, I think just you know. Uh, if you're if you're looking to become a better singles player if, and you don't feel like you have a strategy, I think this is something you should at least take a look at. At least click the link and go look at. I kind of give you know the whole rundown of the program. If you click that link, there's a video where I just explain everything. So I would just encourage you to just go look at it and see if the program is right for you. And if it is, take it for a whirl for the next 365 days, risk free. I think uh, you know. I think you'll. I'm obviously biased, but I think you'll be glad you did. Cool. Very good. All right, guys. Well, it was, it's was it been a pleasure. Uh, we will hang on for a couple more minutes to see if we have any questions coming in. If you have any final questions or if you just want to tell us that you enjoyed hanging out with us tonight, that, that again makes us feel good. One thing that's kind of cool is when I asked for the likes, we, we got up to 18 likes like that. It's like, oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Big like. Yeah, we like the likes. So. Need validation. I've seen Paul Anacone say that the problem with tennis is – how can we measure improvement? Is solution as smart court play site? What is your opinion? What's your opinion on how do you measure how good you're getting? I think that stuff, I think that the play site uh, and the, the Hawkeye and all that is really interesting technology that I think they're just scratching the surface of. Like I know, for example, that Hawkeye, the data we see is like 1% of what they're recording. So they're recording all sorts of positioning data. They're recording literally like the elbow angle and the shoulder angle when somebody hits and they just haven't, you know, released that to the general public. So I think you could do some fascinating stuff if you get a hold of that data. I think there's a security breach on Facebook on it right now. Yeah. You know, there's something about Cambridge Analytica, you know, well, so here's the thing I'm in Washington DC. So that's all we hear about. Like (laughs) there's, you know, Zuckerberg was up here today and yesterday and whenever. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the thick of it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we just, we just, uh, need <laughs> trying to make like a, a data breach joke for Hawkeye. That's not like a bad joke. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Hawkeye, okay. if you're watching, release the data. Quit while you're ahead. Yeah, what? exactly. I don't know if I was ahead, but I'm just going to quit. All right. Mark Davis, one of my favorite people out there, Mark, thanks for all your support. Um, he asked, will the program help me beat a pusher, beat the pusher? Will the program help him do that? Yeah, man. That's one of the seven villains, the pusher slash uh, moonballer. Yeah. Might be the ultimate villain. So, yeah. Oh, right. well, that's, that's villain number one. That is villain number one in the uh, villain's playbook. Yeah. All right. So, there you go, Mark. It will help you beat the pusher. Uh, very cool. Um I guess that's it, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link one more time uh, in the chat section. Again, feel free to email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail. And, Will, this is like time is running out. We've been talking about time, time, time. Does this thing close tomorrow? Tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. U.S. Pacific time. No we, start, we get going on Monday. That's when the course starts. So we move through as like kind of like a college class. Okay. Right. So because we found that it's it's most helpful to go through as a class as much as possible. If you fall behind, no problem. You don't have to be there at any given time. Um, we just found that it's best if we can kind of keep some structure. But if life gets in the way or work gets in the way, you can go through at your own schedule. 
but we start Monday. So, so you start Monday. Yeah. So if I if I like fall asleep with some Cheetos on my lap and then I wake up and I'm like, oh gosh, it's twelve thirty. I missed it. What what happens? Well, if it's you, Peter, and I know I'm a big fan of Cheetos, so I might make an exception. But uh, you know, <laughs> case by case. Case by case. Right. We're, we're trying to just yeah, close it down and, and and move on and start teaching the course. But if you're a fan of Cheetos and they and they knocked you out, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. Well, there you go, guys. That That is, uh, I think, it for the night. And I'm going to go to our stop broadcast button. And I want to let you know, even though I'm turning the camera off on you guys, I appreciate you taking your time to be here. I had a great time with Will. And uh, thank you so much. Anything you want to say, Will? Just thanks for everybody who joined live. Um, appreciate you taking the time hanging out. Um, and hope we answered your questions and you got something out of it. All right. See ya. Peace.